You have to position yourself into the next wave, which is AI. And AI is not just a technology wave. It's, it's really a super wave, which I think is a true game changer for our industry, but of course for the world as a whole. What's really, really interesting is the data that companies themselves have and have captured over the years. And NICE is one of the first companies to make that point. Step one, kind of get off-prem onto the cloud. Um, the, the thing I'm noticing is that a lot of our clients are realizing that's just the beginning. Yeah. Because the, all the other pieces that make up your enterprise value uh, case, like how you apply AI and how you really understand the rest of your platforms. And, and really what's often underestimated is the impact on the workforce. So it's not just about making money and doing it because, you know, everybody's talking about generative AI. It's about really wanting to connect and know more about your consumer and what they need. It's just so great to see everybody again face to face, to have the energy of interactions again. We have an outstanding amount of people over here. We have, you know, north of 2,000 people attending wow. the event. We expected, you know, a thousand, so we kind of maxed out the, the, the venue. Tom Brandon here. Start spreading the news because today I'm headed to New York, New York. Hey everybody, it's Nick Cooper. I'm on my way to the NICE conference. Well, so here we are. We made it to the NICE uh, Interactions Conference in New York City. Yeah, we're here at the Javits Center with 2,500 of our closest friends and family relations uh, <laughs> in the NICE community. Yeah, so we're here to learn more about you know, NICE and what are they doing? How are they solving the problem of why customer service still sucks? Yeah, we, we've got some interviews lined up with the uh, executive team as well as a couple of their customers and a few other people. Who knows who we'll run into here? Yeah, and I think they're, if nothing else, we're in for a great show. They really do have a great way of uh, presenting themselves and some really, looks like, fantastic technology. So if, if that's the problem, I think we're going to find some answers. Yeah, y'all come with us. innovation with their own technology stack became parallel owners of customer service so Barack thank you so much for making time it's great to see you it's great to be here in New York you kind of talked about this moment the CX moment and you use powerful metaphors like you're either the steamroller or you become part of the road uh, what do you mean by that I think that you know it's, it's uh, true for the CX industry, it's true for many other things. Eventually, if you look at the past 30 years, we've seen several you know, waves of technology, from hardware to software to internet to uh, mobile to cloud, and now, now AI. And every company out there, as well as every vendor, have to find a way to center themselves into that and really leverage this technology uh, wave. And that was my key message to the, you know, to the many customers we have out there. You have to position yourself into the next wave, which is AI. And AI is not just a technology wave. It's, it's really a super wave, which I think is a true game changer for our industry, but of course for the world as a whole. Well, you know, a lot of the world kind of woke up that AI exists and it has a place in CX. It's been part of your, pivotal part of your strategy for years now. As the world kind of catch, catches up to where NICE was, was you know, uh, on this journey years ago, 
Um, obviously, that brings some awareness to AI, but it also brings some, some baggage that AI carries from the, the first generation of AI, things like chatbots and stuff. So how do you see the opportunity and how do you see that kind of challenge of, of people's maybe negative viewpoint of AI today? I think, again, going back to many other technological waves uh, that maybe people had at the beginning some not so great experiences with, you know, AI, as I said, is not, not a new thing. It's been out there for, for decades. But uh, what we're seeing right now is a classic thing of an early adoption of a technology. Individuals tried ChatGPT and BARD and other things, and they're now understanding what AI can do for them and what are the positive aspects of AI. And as soon as, as soon as individuals adopt a certain technology, then comes the enterprise adoption cycle, which is very different because it requires a f many, many things that individuals you know, don't, don't uh, uh, need. But I think that this will increase the uh, acceptance and maybe positive approach to what AI can do uh, to customer service. And hopefully a few years will forget the very early stages of you know, how chatbot used to react and still are, by the way, when they're not really empowered by AI. And although they were, they were called like AI chatbot, quite frankly, they were not, mm. the old yeah. version were not really AI empowered uh, chatbot. I think that, you know, if, you know, there are many things AI can do great for our lives. When it comes to CX and when you try to synthesize what, what AI is going to bring into CX and customer service, it goes back to three fundamental uh, things. First of all, what we always wanted is, which is, you know, mass personalization at scale. That's, mm -hmm. that's what organizations want to achieve with their consumers, not something that can be achieved by pulling more and more labor into this environment. Second is the notion of being able to take decisions at a very fast velocity. Going back to what you said about all of a sudden I can see and do things that used to take days and I have to bring my data analyst and do it at a, you know, click of a button. The third part, and there are a lot of people working customer service. It is a very complex uh, thing. If you can really amplify the employees in the customer service using AI, that's kind of a you know, winning combination. What was your big takeaway from Well, this you know, they really said consumer experience. Yes business experience yes. and agent experience. Yeah. But you know, that's the agent A, B, C's, right? That's agent awesome. experience, yeah. business experience, consumer experience. And I was sitting there thinking the whole time, where was the light and co-pilot when I was an yeah. agent? <laughs> we launched Enlightened three years ago with this vision in mind, right? To create a CX specific AI engine. Yep. And it really pays off right now, right, with everything that we see around us, to have that foundation and be able to provide those solutions. So I used to be a call center supervisor back in the day, oh, wow. and it was like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Yeah. So what's that perfect call that you need to coach the um, agent on? And you would spend hours and hours searching, and then you're like, well, here's kind of an example. Zeroes in on what they need to improve on. Yeah. Um, it also, it just gives the supervisors a wealth of data that they yeah. didn't have before. It really is kind of meeting customers, you know, where they want to be met. Exactly. You know, something you talked about. Exactly. And based on what the customer is doing, we're able to respond right then and there. Mm -hmm. It might be a static message, but it is pertin pertinent to what they're doing at that particular point in time. The first step and the hardest step is always figuring out what problem you're solving. A lot of people buy the new product because it's new and flashy and there was a fantastic demo, which today's demo was phenomenal. To get to the point where any of those tools that you're about to pay for will help you, you have to know what you're doing, why you're doing it, what problems you're solving, and what, and what workarounds have embedded themselves into your workflow in the past that, you're having, that you've been working around forever. The biggest sticking point that we have when we're trying to do one of those transformative integrations where you're going from a legacy system to a new system. And let's say this new system ticks all of your boxes, has everything you need for your contact center. What always slowed us down is the phrase, we've always done it this way. So if, you're, if you want to go from where you are to this platform as quickly as possible, forget everything that you did. Use this as a clean breaking point and move to the new technology.
I think that eventually as consumers, and we are all consumers, I always say that we eventually would like to interact with companies and providers in the same way that we do with our friends and families. Mm -hmm. When I, I, I like to tell the story that when I call my mom, she doesn't ask me five questions to understand who I am. And if I just corresponded with her over WhatsApp and then called her over the email, we continue to, the conversation from the, uh, from the same point. And eventually that's what, what people want to get when they, when they interact with, uh, with organizations. So to achieve that, it's not just about the AI piece. It's about how do you deploy AI the, with the right technology stack on a single platform that connects all the data, all the applications, and all the processes together. And then when you bring AI into the, to that mix, it can truly do magic. So Vic, looking back on the event, what's your biggest takeaway? You know, what, what we've seen from NICE here is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like, And the way they presented it was kind of mind-blowing, really. What I'll be interested to see is how does the enterprise get to that CX1 yeah. level? In the past, it took an enormous amount of effort to kind of customize these experiences. Um, and I think now AI is becoming more of a tool and, and we're looking at it not just as like a chatbot, right? Or even an intelligent chatbot, but actually, how do we manage our call contact centers? Yeah. You know, and how do we help customers get better self-service? So I think NICE's vision goes way beyond the contact center. And they really have brought that home now with generative and conversational AI. To really make this work, you have to kind of go all in, it looks like to me. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the challenge is if you don't, you end up with multiple AIs, yeah. you know, and then if the AIs aren't talking to each other, because they really can't, you know, then you're going to end up with that, this siloed environment again. Yeah, we have flying cars now. It is the future, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah may, maybe next year we'll have that. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching from New York. We're, we're just thrilled to have been here, and we'll see you next yeah, time. Yeah, we're going to go ride a few more escalators. Oh, yeah. We're having such great The time. ones that aren't broken. Yeah. Yeah. See you next time. Yeah.